Hello and welcome to Stockwatch presented by me, Evan Lucas for Go Market Securities. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature. None of it relied upon as any form of personal advice. Go Market Securities does not know your personal scenario nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of it relied upon as any form of advice at all. It's just general in nature only. I want to have a look at the China story and the bulk commodities because at the moment the data that's come out for February is very, very interesting. We saw really large ramp ups in exports around steel. We saw steel stockpiling starting to fall. And overall, the demand for steel internally, however, is going one way and that is backwards. That is a bit of a downer if you've got exposure to that space. And that's why at the moment, the overall market consensus in terms of the analytical world is that the one that is probably gonna underperform is something like Fortescue, considering it has almost a pure play to iron ore. But what the data also showed was the flip side of something like copper and how tight the copper market actually is. And it's only getting tighter. With that in mind, if you have a look at the supply chains into China on the copper side, it's now still in deficit. If you look also at stockpiles, it's also in deficit. It explains again why we're starting to continue to see just ever so slightly tick ups on the CME and the LME around copper prices, whether it's per pound or per ton. So then you look at those that are exposed to it. You look at things like Karankot, you look at also Otogo over in Mongolia, some of the mining going on here in Australia as well. And clearly Rio and BHP have a very, very strong position in that space. Rio in particular is starting to bring on really high quality supply out of Mongolia. The other advantage they have, it's next door. So transportation costs are much, much lower. The ability to deal with Chinese and Mongolian relations is much, much easier than having to ship it in. And that's why at the moment the consensus is, according to those that follow this quite closely, that Rio is probably the one that benefits the most from the copper issue that's going on in China. That isn't necessarily going to be a long-term solution, and we understand that. But overall, it's something that I think is going to start really playing out at the back end of 2024 as the exuberance that we've seen in markets start to actually get more specific as to the why, the justification for, and how the longer term outlook is. Rio has a very, very good market leading position just from geopolitical and also from geo engineering of what might actually happen in that market. For that reason, it's why we find copper the most interesting bulk metal and why those with the best exposure to it, probably the ones that may outperform. 